Hey Algebra students, today we're going to do an overview of solving linear systems. And this is just two by two linear systems, it's not uh, uh, three, um, uh, three variable linear systems. So, and we're, our overview is going to consist of seven problems. So here's our first problem. We have the intersection of these two lines, y equals two th negative two thirds x plus seven and y equals negative three x minus 14. So what it is, is we're looking for the one point there's an, here's one line, here's another line, okay? We're looking for one point that is the intersection of those two lines, where the y-coordinate is negative two-thirds times the x-coordinate plus seven, and the y-coordinate is also negative three x minus 14. So what we can do is we can say, well, shoot, if this equals the y-coordinate and this also equals the y-coordinate, then they must equal each other, okay? Just think about it for a second. So if they equal each other, then we can just write negative two-thirds x plus seven equals negative three x minus 14. And now we have a, uh, now we have a, uh, 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 an equation with just one unknown, and shoot, we know how to solve those. Uh, I'm gonna add two-thirds x to both sides, and I'm gonna get, this adds up to zero, I'm gonna get seven equals, okay, folks, a lot of times I see students looking at this and going, ooh, I hate fractions, I'm gonna change this to a decimal. Don't do that. The fractions are easier than the decimal. The decimal, if you change it to a decimal, you're probably gonna round somewhere. And another word for rounding is accepting a small error. Don't accept the small error, okay? We wanna get the right answer here. So negative three x plus uh, two thirds x is, uh, I could say negative two and a third x, but I'm gonna keep it as an improper fraction and call it negative seven thirds x minus 14. Add 14 to both sides and I get 21 equals negative seven thirds times x. Uh, if I have 21 equals a number times x, how do I solve that? I divide by this number and dividing by negative seven thirds is the same thing as multiplying times the reciprocal of negative seven thirds, which is negative three sevenths. So that means x equals negative three sevenths times 21. And uh, negative times positive is negative, and 21 over seven is the same thing as three over one. And now I have three times three is nine, over one times one is one, and that's just nine. So I get x equals negative nine. Hooray, x equals negative nine, am I done? No, I gotta find a point. And a point means an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. There's my x-coordinate, negative nine. Where's my y-coordinate? Well, I can either use this equation or that equation, either one. Okay, tell you what, I'll use both of them because if I get the same y-coordinate in both of them, I'll know I'm right. So negative two-thirds times negative nine. Y is negative two-thirds times negative nine plus seven. Negative two-thirds, negative times negative is positive, and two-thirds of nine is six, so that's six plus seven equals 13. Or I use the other one, and I say negative three times negative nine minus 14. So y is negative three times negative nine minus 14. Negative times negative is positive, three times nine is 27. 27 minus 14 is 13, and I got the same answer both times, so that means my answer is x is negative nine, y is 13, and there's my point of intersection, okay? So this is the intersection of these two lines, which is also called the solution of the linear system, okay? So when you see uh, a problem that says, find the solution to the following linear system, it's the same thing as finding the point that is the intersection point of those two lines, okay? Let's do this one now. And we have two main strategies for solving linear systems. One is called substitution, one's called elimination. The last one we just did, that was substitution because I had y equals something and I replaced that y, I substituted. I replaced the y with the thing that it equaled. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I have x equals five y minus one. So in my next equation, instead of saying x, I'll refer to what x equals. So I'll have 2x minus 9 equals 1. What's x? Why, it's 5y minus 1, okay? You see how this and this say the exact same thing? Because x and 5y minus 1 are the same thing. 
And now what do I have to do? Well, I have to distribute that 2, and I'll get uh, 10y minus 2 minus 9 equals 1. And uh, whoa, 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 I did something weird there. Oh, 9y. OK, there we go. All right. Found that y. OK, now I have 10y minus 9y. 10y minus 9y is just 1y. So that's y minus 2 equals 1. And I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And I'm going to get y equals 3. That's my y coordinate. How do I find the x coordinate? Well, replace y with 3. And I get x equals 5 times 3 minus 1, which is 15 minus 1, which is 14. So x must be 14. And let me check and make sure that I'm right. My answer is 14, 3. Remember, put them in alphabetical order. First the x coordinate, then the y coordinate. So let me see. Uh, that means 2 times 14 minus 9 times 3 should get me 1. Is that true? 2 times 14 minus 9 times 3. Uh, 2 times 14 is 28. 9 times 3 is 27. And 28 minus 27 does equal 1, so that means I can tell, yes, I'm exactly right. All right, let's do number three. We're doing seven problems here, and uh, we're two down, five to go. Number three says find the solution to the following linear system. y equals 3 fourths x minus 14, and 3x minus 4y equals 56. Another great problem to use substitution with. I'm going to take what y equals, and I'm going to replace this y here with the thing that y equals. So I have 3x minus 4y equals 56. What's y again? y is 3 fourths x minus 14. So this gets me 3x minus 4 times 3 fourths x minus 14 equals 56. And the first thing I have to do is distribute. Make sure you don't distribute a 4, but you distribute a negative 4 there. So 3x, negative 4 times 3 fourths x is negative 3x. Negative 4 times negative 14 is positive 56 equals 56. And this is interesting because 3x minus 3x is just 0. And I end up with 56 equals 56. Uh, yeah, 56 does equal 56. What happened to my x's? What happened to my y's? Well, the x's and y's all eliminated each other. And uh, so what does this mean graphically? Well, let's think about what we're doing. What we're doing is we're finding the x and y that make these two uh, equations work. Okay? And what I find is I need an x and a y that will make 56 equal 56. Well, any x will make 56 equal 56. I have an infinite number of x's that can make 56 equal 56. And yes, that is our answer. There is an infinite number of solutions here, an infinite number of solutions. Okay. Now, does that mean that any x and any y will solve this system? No. Let me tell you exactly which x and which y will. Okay, remember how on the prior problems we had one line and another line, and we're finding the intersection of those two lines? Well, on this problem here, if you were to solve this second equation for y, you would get the first equation. So in other words, this is the same line. We have one line and then the same line right on top of it. So it's not that any x and any y will work, but any x, y on this line will work. Because we have basically an infinite number of intersection points because it's one line just sitting on top of itself. Okay? It's kind of a weird, uh, uh, a weird example, but you do see these sometimes. Okay. Moving on. Number four looks like this. Solve the following linear system. 7x minus 3y equals 9, and 2x plus y equals 23. Now this is a perfect one to use elimination on, OK? Now if you remember, when do we use elim elimination? When our x's are lined up, when our y's are lined up, when our equal signs are lined up, and when our constants are lined up. Now what do we do when we're using elimination? Well. We look at these two equations and we say, hmm, how can I make it so that when I add one equation to another one, one of my unknowns just cancels itself out? Okay? In other words, when I add the unknowns, I get a zero pair. I get zero down here. Huh. Well, 
uh, how can I do that? Well, what I can do in this case is I can, I can multiply my second uh, equation by three because what's going to happen here is I'm going to get 3y right here and negative 3y plus 3y is zero. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this equation, both sides, both sides of the equation by three. And so that gets me, the top equation is still 7x minus 3y equals 9. And the bottom equation is 6x plus 3y equals 23 times 3 is 69. And let's add that up. I get 13x, no y's, equals 78. So that means x must be 78 over 13, which is 6. What's y? Well, go back to our uh, initial equations. If x is 6, that means I have 7 times 6 here. So 7 times 6 minus 3y equals 9. That means 42 minus 3y is 9. If I subtract 42 from both sides, I get negative 3y equals negative 33. And if I divide both sides by negative 3, I get y equals 11. Okay. Uh, so that means I have x is 6, y is 11, and that's 6 comma 11. And now let me plug both of those. Let me replace my x with 6 and my y with 11. So 2 times 6 plus 11. 2 times 6 plus 11. I hope that equals 23. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 11. Yes, it does equal 23. That's true. So that means I've got the right answer. Okay. So, when do you use substitution? You use substitution when you have x equals something or y equals something, and you can just replace x with the something that it equals or replace y with the something that it equals. When do you use elimination? When your x's are lined up, when your y's are lined up, when your equal signs are lined up, and when your constants are lined up. What about when neither of those things apply? Well, when neither of those things apply, you have to manipulate one of your equations algebraically to make them apply, and you just kind of look at it and you see what, what can I aim for? What's going to be the simplest route here? Uh, let's do another one. Let's do uh, number five. Number five says 2x plus 5y equals negative 2. 3x plus 7y equals negative 1. x's, y's, equal signs, constants all lined up. This is another great one to use elimination for. So uh, now this time we actually have to multiply both of our equations by something uh, if we're gonna if we're gonna stay with whole numbers and really I prefer staying with whole numbers uh, I'm gonna aim for my X's because the numbers are smaller and uh, I'm gonna multiply the top line by 3 and the bottom line by 2 why because I get 6x here and 6x there but actually I need one of them to be negative in order for me to, to add up those X's and get 0 so I arbitrarily pick one of them to be negative, and I'm going to choose the, the second one, okay? So 3 times 2x is 6x, 3 times 5y is 15y, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x, negative 2 times 7y is negative 14y, and negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Add them up. 15y, okay, the x's are gone. 15y minus 14y is great, y. And negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, and that sure was easy. y equals negative 4. Uh, and so let me go back to my first equation and put negative 4 in for y. And so now I have 2x plus 5 times negative 4 equals negative 2. And so that's 2x plus negative 20. So I'll write that as 2x minus 20 equals negative 2, adding 20 to both sides. Uh, I get 2x equals 18, so x must equal 9. All right, let me go to my second equation. And if x is 9 and y is negative 4, that means I have 3 times 9. 7 times negative 4 is, so 7 times negative 4 equals negative 1. That's 27 plus negative 28. And sure enough, 27 plus negative 28 is negative 1. So that means I know it works if both of my equations work. OK. All right, we're getting pretty good at this. Let's do one more. Actually, let's do two more. Um, solve the following linear system. Number six, we've got x minus 3y is 11, and 12y minus 4x is negative 13. 
Okay, this is a good one to use. Well, shoot, my X's aren't lined up and my Y's aren't lined up, but I'm still gonna use elimination because all I have to do is just change the order of, uh, of, my, uh, of my terms there to get the Y's and the X's lined up. And I'm gonna change the order of my, my second one. For some reason, I feel more comfortable with the X's coming first. I don't know why, it doesn't matter. But so I'm gonna change the order of this first one. Okay, 12Y is positive, right? So I'm gonna put a plus 12Y there. And minus 4X is like thinking plus negative 4X, right? So I'm gonna move this to the front and then this follows. So I'm gonna get negative 4X plus 12Y equals negative 13. And I'm gonna combine that with X minus 3Y equals 11, okay? Negative 4x plus 4x will equal zero, so I'm gonna multiply this uh, second equation by four, and so that's gonna get me, uh, let me do my top equation again, negative 4x plus 12y equals negative 13, and this one is gonna be 4x, four times negative three is negative 12y, four times 11 is uh, 44, add them up and a strange thing happens. Negative 4x plus 4x is zero. 12y minus 12y is zero. And negative 13 plus 44 is 31. So again, my x's and y's have all uh, uh, eliminated each other. And so, um, but this time, unlike last time, last time I had 56 equals 56, something that is obviously true. This time I have zero plus zero is 31, something that is obviously false. So what X and what Y will make this true? None. There are no X's and Y's that will ever make zero equal 31. So that means my answer is no solution. Okay? And what does it mean if I'm looking for two lines, if I'm looking for the intersection of two lines and I say there is no intersection of those two lines and they're on the same plane? That means the two lines must be parallel. Okay? Parallel lines are two lines that have the same slope but different y-intercepts. And if you were to solve both of these for y to get them in the format of y equals uh, uh, in, in slope-intercept form, uh, then you would see they have exactly the same slope, which I believe is gonna be uh, one-third. Uh, the slope is one-third and the two y-intercepts are gonna be something different, okay? So when you have something that is obviously false, that's no solution. When you have something that is obviously true, that is an infinite number of solutions. And then when you just get x equals something and y equals something, well, that's, that's one solution. Okay, last problem. I have 44 coins, all nickels and quarters, that are worth $5.60. How many nickels do I have? Well, this doesn't have to do with the intersection of lines. Huh. But we can still use linear systems to solve it. Okay, so when we're applying linear systems, we're gonna go through five steps. Step one is determine exactly what you're looking for. How many nickels do I have? I'm looking for the number, number of nickels, okay? And I'm also looking for, in the process of finding the number of nickels, I'm also gonna find the number of quarters, okay? So those are the two things I'm looking for, okay? Step two. Give them names. Well, I'm gonna call this one N, and I'm gonna call this one Q, okay? I could just as easily use X and Y. That's what we've been using before. Um, I just, N will make it easier for me to remember. That's what nickels are. Uh, so uh, step three, translate from English to math, okay? And this is what I mean. Before we were establishing what are we looking for? Well, now we're gonna establish what do we know? Well, if this is the number of nickels, n, and this is the number of quarters, q, then if I add my n plus my q, I should get the total number of coins that I have, 44. There's my first equation, okay? On the second equation, I'm gonna use the fact that they are worth $5.60. So how much are my nickels worth? Well, each nickel is worth five cents. That's $0.05. And so if I have n nickels, that must be worth 0.05 times n dollars. And if I have q quarters, that's going to be worth 0.25 q quarters. And the amount of money that my nickels is worth plus the amount of money that my quarters is worth is going to be the amount of money I have, which is 
and 60 cents. I'm not going to put the dollar sign. Just, there we go. Okay? All right. Those are my two equations. And look, my n's are lined up, my q's are lined up, my equal signs are lined up, my constants are lined up. I can use elimination. So what will I do? I think I'm going to multiply my top uh, equation by negative 0.05. All right? And that's going to get me uh, negative 0.05n minus 0.05q equals negative 0.05 times 44 is, uh, I believe that's going to be negative 2.2. Is that right? Uh, yes, that's right. Okay. Uh, add them up. Zero here. 0.25q minus 0.05q is 0.20q. And 5.60 minus 2.2 is 3.4. And so now if I divide both sides by 0.20 or 0.2, it doesn't matter, I'm going to get that q equals 3.4 divided by 0.2, which is, I think that is 17. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that q is 17. And how do I find n? I go back up here to my first line. Uh, if the number of quarters is 17, all I have to do is just subtract 44 minus 17 to get n. So n is 44 minus 17, which turns out to be 27. All right? Now, let me see if this is true. Well, first off, I have 44 coins, 17 quarters and 27 nickels. So, uh, so I know that that works. And uh, let me see if, uh, the, if the money works. Okay, 17 quarters. 16 quarters is $4, so 17 quarters is $4.25. 27 nickels. 20 nickels is a dollar. 7 nickels is 35 cents, so this is a buck 35. And if I add 4.25 plus a buck 35, I get $5.60, and exactly, that's exactly what I wanted, okay? So the last, uh, so, so here are the five steps. Number one, determine exactly what you're looking for. Number two, Give them names, okay? Give them some letters that, that correspond to what you're looking for. Number three, come up with two equations that describe your, your problem. Number four, solve them. And then number five is, don't make your answer n equals uh, uh, 27 and q equals 17. Make your answer a, a statement in English. So the answer is, I have, uh, what was it, 17 quarters. Oh, actually, it says, how many nickels do I have? Oh, 27 nickels. That's my answer. Okay? All right. I hope this helps, and I'll see you next, uh, next video. Bye-bye.